All right, all guests on Zazlo Show 2.0 brought to us by the official beer of the program, Johnny Cuba. European roots with that Caribbean soul, a refreshing German lager in a can. Pick up a six-pack of Johnny for yourself, your local Sedanos, Presidente, Win dixie fresco Moss. Make sure you always drink responsibly. And, of course, don't forget Johnny Cuba's mantra, stay tranquilo. So joining us now, 97.5 The Fanatic in Philadelphia. John Kincaid tomorrow night. Love having you back on the program, John. Tomorrow night. Oh, no, excuse me. Wednesday night. Heat, Sixers, Eastern Conference play-in. So I wanted to get some thoughts. I wanted to get the pulse of what's going on with this Sixer team. Yesterday, when yesterday was unfolding, what were you thinking? What was the Sixer fan thinking? What was best case scenario? Like, were you watching what was going on with the Pacers and Hawks and and the Bucks and the Magic, where you keep in track of everything for seeding wise. Zaz, first of all, great to be back with you. I'm going to be honest with you because Philly fans, we can be pretty chesty and pretty confident at times. But what I would tell you is, is that yesterday afternoon, all I wanted to do was avoid the five seed. And all I want to do on Wednesday night is avoid the eight seed. Because as Sixer fans know, they're playing really, really good basketball now that Joel Embiid's back. But the last thing we need is to see the Boston Celtics in the first round. Because unlike what the Miami Heat have done to the Celtics in the past, the Celtics and the Sixers have an ugly recent history, one of complete domination by Boston. So for me, it was just make sure we don't get the five. And then Wednesday night, it'll be try to make sure we don't get the eight. That's how I felt, too. You know, the last few weeks of the season, the money spot was six or seven. Ideally, you'd love to be six, but seven, that's okay also because you're on that's the other side of the bracket. You don't have to face the Celtics potentially until the Eastern Finals. But is, the, is there not an element like on in the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs? I'm a huge Panther fan. I, sure. I want the Panthers to match up in the first round with Tampa. I'm hoping we get Tampa because I want to go through them. So is there no element like that with the Sixer fan? Where it's like, come on, we want to go through the Celtics. I would like to have you tested right after this interview, please. Could you pee in the cup and we'll send it to management? I think you're nuts. Of why, why in the world do you want to go through what might be the biggest boogeyman of all? Let somebody else potentially trip them up, take them out, or do otherwise. Look, I'm not going to give you any kind of false bravado. I would pick the Sixers to win any playoff series confidently as long as it was not Boston and the Knicks. Confidently, I would feel good about them winning the series. But with Embiid healthy is the disclaimer. Uh, but I can tell you this, like like with a guy like you have, with Eric Spolster, you've got the, the freaking magician as your head coach. And as Sixer fans, we have as much respect for we have for the Celtics. We're thinking about this, this play-in game. I'd rather play Spolstra in a one game than play him in a seven game anytime because he is one of the best coaches in the league, hands down. But we think we got a pretty good one, too, in Nick Nurse. So how, how are we feeling about Embiid going into Wednesday? What's the feel there? The feel is, is that he is healthy. He's ready to go. He showed us down the stretch that uh, his return to the team just completely changed everything. And Zaz, it's more about the spacing. Uh, You saw Kyrie's Maxey had an all-star year this year and had his first all-star season playing alongside Embiid. And then he was asked to lead the team. He's not ready to do that yet. But what he showed is when he's there as the Robin to Embiid's Batman, it's really special. And what it also has allowed is Kelly Oubre Jr., to be able to step up. And now we're seeing with him being on the floor, we see a totally different side of Buddy Heald because when Buddy Heald's getting open threes, he's really, really good. And we hadn't seen a really strong performance from Buddy Heald since he was acquired. So the way I look at it is, is shocker. Embiid makes everybody better and the confidence level's pretty high. But I honestly feel everything is broken well for the Sixers because again, if you can find a way past the heat in game to get that seven seed, I think the Sixers may very well end up in the Eastern Conference Finals. 
Yeah, and then you then you end up being one of the like most unfair number seven seeds or eight seed for that matter, if, if things go well against the Celtics, but you could end up being the most unfair seven seed because they're so much better, the Sixers, than one of those lower seeds. And I really think, you know, this happened with us with Bam out of bio a couple of years ago where he missed like two months. I felt that that was going to actually be a blessing because for Embiid, what did we see at the end of last postseason and probably the others before it? He's dead tired physically by the end. So maybe you're getting a fresh Embiid for the start of the playoffs as long as he's healthy. I think it could be a blessing for you guys. Well, I absolutely think the time off is going to be fresher legs and otherwise. But what we always worry about here come this time of year is the idea is Joel Embiid going to be totally healthy? Is the knee going to hold up? And just coming off of knee surgery, uh, he's made a great recovery. He looks very, very good out there. And I believe even missing two months, I think Joel Embiid was the MVP this year. Averaging a point a minute of play, he's, he's matured. His game has continued to develop. And with Nick Nurse, I really believe that he will find a way to be have his best playoffs ever. He's just got to get there. How much more enjoyable? Now, it's tough without Embiid the last couple months, but without all the hard and drama and all that stuff, has this year been so much more enjoyable than last? Well, it was enjoyable until the last of January when Embiid went down injured. But what I can tell you is, is um, and I'm a Doc Rivers supporter, but not a Doc Rivers like pom-pom shaker, but watching Nick Nurse coach Zaz, I had never watched much of the Toronto Raptors. And when he was coming into town, I read his book and, and tried to get acquainted with how he is. He's an incredible, I feel so much more confident as a Sixers fan with him designing the game plans, calling the shots. He's much more of a game day technician than Doc Rivers. And so to me, that excites me. But also what excites me is the idea that this Sixers team it's a it's the unknown. And, when, and whenever it's the unknown, unless your coach is really awesome, like for you guys with Spolster, you know he's a master in the playoffs. You know he's a great tactician. So you look forward to that opportunity. I'm looking forward to seeing what Nick Nurse does with Joel Embiid and a full roster and seeing how he's able to handle. This is a team that has not gone through, got to the third round, got into the conference finals since 2001. It's unbelievable. And it's, it's a talking point that people will tell me on the air in Philly that I harp on too much, but I don't think I harp on it enough. It must end. And I do believe if they get the seven seed that it has a great chance to end this year. Yeah, I mean, they Embiid has never won more than one playoff series never. in a single postseason. It, that, that's wild. I don't know if you saw yesterday, so when the Bucks were playing the Magic and the Bucks lost, so they dropped to number three, Doc pulled the starters, pulled Damian Lillard early in the fourth quarter of a 12-point game. I mean, John, how bad did Doc Rivers want to avoid potentially Philadelphia in the first round? Look, so look, bad. Doc Doc was a friend to our show. And so I am, a, I, again, I like Doc, but I think he wanted no parts of Embiid in a playoff series. And the thing is, too, how banged up does he know Giannis is? And if he thinks that, a matchup with Giannis and Embiid with a hobbled Giannis early on. He didn't want that. Maybe he was looking at that. I have no problem, by the way, with coaches trying to pick their opponent. Like, I don't know about you. I haven't, I haven't heard your show where you've ever talked I, about that topic. I don't like I have the no bad karma. I, I think there's karma and there's basketball juju, and I don't like messing with it. Go out there. You got to win. See, I enjoy uh, – I would want my coach – to absolutely pick me the best path. I would. Like, what do you think's the best matchup? And then I want them to deliver. But I would absolutely want them to pick me the best path. I want the easiest path. And, and that's that's what it is, is whatever way I think is, and, and none of them are easy. It's been a crazy Eastern Conference. Yeah. But the way I look at it is, and I kept telling our audience last week, the Sixers were sitting there, two wins behind the Knicks, two wins behind the Cavs, one behind the Pacers, one behind the Magic, and I'm saying, Embiid missed two months. He missed yeah. nine weeks of play. They would have blown past all of those teams with a healthy Joel Embiid, and they yeah. didn't get the opportunity. Now they're just going to have to go and prove it. 
How do we feel in Philly these days? We're, we're five years removed, but how do we feel in Philly these days about Jimmy Butler? Jimmy Butler is beloved here by the fan base. And it pisses me off. Can I be honest? It pisses yeah. me off. He was, a, he was a guy who came into town for a cup of coffee. Yeah. But Jimmy Butler's play in clutch situations embodies everything that Philly fans like. He's got a little bit of swagger to him. He's got a little bit of that dagger, that lethal dagger to him. And he was a guy that this city will never forgive that they didn't commit to him and they committed to others. But unless Ben Simmons was going at the time, they weren't going to keep Jimmy Butler. And at the time, we didn't know that Ben Simmons had the 10 cent head. So it, it, it's I understand why it happened at the time, but this city loves, respects, and except for Wednesday night, they cheer for Jimmy Butler. We hear about Jimmy Butler's name more than any player that plays in any other city here in Philadelphia. They respect and love the hell out of him. So does T Tobias Harris is one of those other guys also. Does he catch Does he catch shrapnel because of how great Jimmy Butler is here with Miami? Does he catch shrapnel? I mean, I mean, the, the talk of him being a max contract guy, it's honestly, it's one of the number one talking points that I can't wait to stop having to talk about, hear about, or otherwise. Tobias Harris is a nice player. And he's a nice three on many, many teams. But Zaz, the problem is this. If he averages you 18, he doesn't get 18. He gets 26 and he gets 12. He gets 28 and he gets 10. He doesn't average out. He He's not a consistent player and he never has been. And they talk about him being a guy who they need to, before the year, we need you to step up. We need you to do more things. When, when Joel Embiid was out, it's all I had to know. He didn't step up again and really take charge, take the team by the throat. He plays passive way too many nights, and I think it'll be a good moment for not only him, but for the Sixers organization to have him exit. I do want to ask you, John, before I let you go here, uh, I thought it was weird. There was a whole big to-do a couple days ago with the Iverson statue. That must have been so annoying for you guys where people were so critical of how small the statue is. I mean, that's literally, like, all the statues are small. That's their thing outside the arena. I don't, well, it's outside the practice facility. Okay. Because the Sixers do not, they're a tenant in the Wells Fargo Center. So the Sixers can't put up any kind of statues without the Sixers approving it. And the Sixers are trying to get their own stadium built in town. So they don't want that, they don't want to do anything that they don't have to do. So the practice facility... Allen Iverson's statue is on a post. It's the same as every other great, whether it's yeah. Moses Malone or Bobby Jones or, or Maurice Cheeks. It is ridiculous because people were like, that's disrespectful. No, in fact, it's like a monument grove that you would walk around and uh, it was uh, people don't know. And if they haven't been there, and I can understand because it's a private facility, why they've never seen it before. I guarantee you when the Sixers either get a new stadium of their own, which they want to construct, or if they team on one with the Flyers, there'll be plenty of statues outside. Allen Iverson will have his big day. John, always good having you on the show. I'm sure we got Philadelphia folks down here in South Florida who are hearing you right now. Tell everybody how they can hear you and everything you got going on. Listen on the Fanatic app. Uh, find me at John Kincaid on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Kincaid Radio. I love hearing from people. And yes, you guys have a strong Philly contingent down there everywhere you go. And we love them. Great job, John. Good having you on the show again. Thank you, pal. Thanks, guys.